The Weekly Standard is a, a, a very conservative magazine. In fact, it's mainly known as a neoconservative publication. They're the folks that led us into the Iraq war. Uh, the founders are people like John Pedort, Bill Kristol, uh, Fred Barnes. And so these are all uh, neocons, uh, all warmongers. And today we celebrate uh, its demise. It has been shut down and no longer exists. Now, I'm gonna show you how irrelevant it was as well. But first, let's be amused at the at the reaction of one of its original co-founders, John Pedortz. He went nuts over it today. So it was owned by the Clarity Media Group. It's a standard publisher, which owns the standard publisher Media DC, which was publishing Weekly Standard. But it all just comes back to rich billionaires. And so Rupert Murdoch used to run it, uh, own it for a while. Uh, and then and this guy Anschutz, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, took it over. Uh, and he's the one that has decided to shut it down. So Pud Hortz goes nuts. This is one of his many tweets on this issue. He says, the murderers are Philip Anschutz and Ryan McKibben. They could have sold the Weekly Standard, they refused to. Nothing like this has ever happened in my half century of experience with publishing. Okay, first of all, neoconservatives that started the Iraq war that led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands and arguably millions of people, talking about the murder of their beloved publication that started that war, mm -hmm. I'm gonna file under irony, yeah. okay? Um, and second of all, I thought you guys were capitalists. I hear from people that they live like capitalists every day. The guy owns the paper, couldn't he do anything he wants with it, right? What, what right do you have under the capitalist system to complain, okay? And then he goes <laughs> on to say, and this is my favorite part and why we're doing this story in the first place. I told you all along, and if you've been watching the Young Turks for a while, we talked about the Weekly Standard because it, it did such terrible propaganda within Washington, terrible in its consequences, but unfortunately, it worked. And, uh, and I told you, it's just propaganda, it never makes any money, they don't actually believe in uh, capitalism. And in his anger, Pedortz accidentally admitted it. So he said, quote, to be sure, it has never made money. Magazines like it never make money. That is exactly right. Says commentary magazine editor. Yes, <laughs> he, he, that's right, John Pedorz runs Commentary Magazine, which is a magazine like the Weekly Standard. They never make money, so wait, not, what happened to living like a capitalist every day? Mm -hmm. No, it's propaganda for the rich, that's why they finance it. And he further clarified it, he said, within the giant corporations run by the wealthy men who started the Standard and then bought it, Rupert Murdoch and Anschutz, its annual losses were a rounding error akin to the budget for the catering on one of their blockbuster movie productions. In other words, I want more welfare, yeah. why wouldn't they give me more corporate welfare? So why did they lose money, knowing that they were never ever going to make money on it? Because they wanted to do marketing for their war on which they would make a lot of money. Yeah. So that's how conservative media works. When on the left side, no, 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 it's capitalism all the way. You've got to make money and you gotta, you know, and otherwise they will shut you down immediately. On the right wing, it's gobs of money for propaganda money. You don't have to make money. We're making money off the tax cuts, off the deregulation, off the wars. You're just a puppet for us. Yeah. And Pedort's being like shocked and chagrined that he turns out to be the puppet is hilarious. Last quote from him, he says, the cessation of the standard is an intellectual and political crime. But not a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, to that point, John, you're right, absolutely right. All this drama over what? The weekly standard circulation this year was 65,000 people, wow. which would be a poor performance for one video online. Okay, you can say a Young Turks video, you can say any video, right? And they, all this over 65,000. Why? This is the relevant part. It's not just to make fun of them, it's not just Schadenfreude, okay? It is because these tiny little publications that actually have no following at all, tiny, minuscule, that never make any money, why are they there? And why do they have such an outsized influence? We talked about why they're funded in the first place. But Washington takes them seriously and amplifies them. Yeah. So you'll have giant organizations on the left that all of the Washington media will ignore. And then you'll have minuscule, microscopic organizations like the Weekly Standard. They'll be like, well, the Weekly Standard says we should go to war with Iraq. I mean, that's a brilliant point by made by the Weekly Standard. Let's have them all over television as if they're relevant people. It's because, hey, look at that, 
Television also makes money from money in politics, corruption, mm -hmm. uh, pharmaceutical companies, and the, and all everything else, and the defense contractors, and the oil companies, and the list goes on and on and on. This is how corruption works. And when finally, apparently, the owner had enough of losing money over this, he already got his tax cuts. He already got his deregulation. Maybe just mission accomplished. He already got his war, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, John Pedortz. I mean, you want to talk about a political and intellectual crime. What you did in the Iraq war fits that description perfectly. And now you're triggered and you need a safe space and you're a precious little snowflake crying that your corporate welfare has been cut off. Oh, that's perfect irony. Such, yeah. such irony. And one thing about this, and it's I, nobody should mourn this, but, but they are a lonely voice on the right that is anti-Trump in terms of what they've been writing over the past year and a half, two years, and I, that needs to not go away, because that you need that from the right as well. Yeah, yeah and so they might, they might open up a new publication that's also anti-Trump, so this, there's good commentators on the right wing, I don't mean good people, but ones with knowledge on this saying this is not a Trump play, that they're not just trying to suck up to Trump by killing this organization. Pedorts is upset, well, they could have sold it to someone else. Well, if they sold to someone else, they would lose money with right. it. Right. So that why makes don't you no buy sense. it, John. Yeah, yeah, why don't you buy it? Exactly. You run a magazine. <laughs> you don't want to lose that money either. They don't even believe in capitalism. It's all a ruse to get the, the policy that they want. What's sickening about it is that the rest of the media plays along. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.